in every generation. There is always a voice that God sends to help us understand the truth and debunk the lies that bind us. We know that to open the eyes of the people, you don't bring out the sweet things, but hard truth to those benefiting from the status quo. We are the truth mongers. Now, contending for the faith is not a monopoly of Christians. In fact, Muslims and other religions have often successfully neutralized even pastors. Ann Holmes Redding was an Episcopal priest for 25 years until a radical test of faith. Several years ago, while she was mourning the death of her mother, she was trying out an Islamic meditation technique that she'd learned in an interfaith class. And that, she says, is when it happened. It came with such clarity and such power that I could understand it as nothing else but uh, an invitation from God. In fact, she says it was Jesus himself who led her to Islam. You think Jesus led you to become a Muslim? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're laughing. Because I know it doesn't make sense to people. Now, Redding not only prays in church, but she also prays five times a day to Allah. The truth is, there are many called and genuine men of God, but just like Philip in Acts chapter 8, they have blind spots which makes them an entry point of the demonic to the church with or without their knowledge. We saw this last year as the Kenyan clergy led by Archbishop Kitonga came out to sanitize Bishop Murithi's sex scandal by claiming that the demon that made Murithi for years to have marital affairs came through a certain door in his house of grace church. <laughs> These blind spots is the reason we see Philip baptizing Simon the sorcerer and even gives him a position in church. It took a genuine apostolic grace in Simon Peter to detect this sorcerer and deal with him. Well, Apostle Kimani may be a true man of God, but he is unfortunately on his way to destroying his years of labor through the doctrines that he has been teaching, such as pouring of anointing oil to sanctify cities, raising and uprooting evil altars, among other money-making doctrines that he does not want to be examined through an apostolic chart. So the truth you want from me and uh, from Takim to address is about the anointing oil. Let's address, let's stick to that issue and whatever other doctrinal issue that may arise. Because there are others that, that uh, we know, like raising and silencing of altars. You know, we there are a lot of uh, doctrines of devils that have been peddled as gospel truth. All that the platform can give, sober discussion can come out of there. That will set things clear. I don't think sir, that's too hard to do. I don't think any apostle, let's say, let, let's stick to the apostle. They all died for their faith, sir. So what is this that today's apostles protect their lives so much that they will not lay down on the, on the, on the altar of sacrifice for the sake of Christ? It's, it's not about you. It's not about your image. It's about Christ. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they yes, are the God. So I have told you, Victor, yes. we are considering this matter prayerfully, and we'll see how God reads us and continue, will continue to read us. Apostle Kimani should remember that none of the apostles cared about their lives. They all traded it for Christ. I mean, is it not written that whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their lives for my sake will find it? Hmm. This brings us to this question. Should defending the doctrine that you believe in using the more sure word of prophecy, that is the Bible, make someone this fearful? Speaking about prophetic acts, as we wait for his response, Apostle Takim gives us a snippet of the questions he'll throw to Apostle Kimani and the rest of the preachers defending error. See you in the next video. I threw a challenge on uh, Kimani and asked him to come for Apostolic Channel National TV. Let me leak one of the things I'm going to tell him. I will tell him that stop preaching about altar. Stop using oil for only six months. 
if your ministry survives, it means you are called of God. I will mention seven things he should stop doing, which the Bible is against. He should only stop doing them for only six months. If his ministry survives, it means he's called of God. <laughs> That's what I want to tell him. That's one of the things I will, tell, I will tell him if he comes. So I'm licking it ahead so that in case he accepts the challenge, he should come and meet me. I will pay for the airtime. I repeat, I will present six practices, seven practices he's doing that are against the Bible. One of it is teaching about raising of altar, silencing of altar, and breaking of altar. I will mention seven things that are against the Bible that he should stop doing. If, if his ministry survives after six months, know that he's called of God. And I will throw the challenge to everybody, in every preacher in Kenya. If your ministry survives, stop using oil, stop teaching about raising, silencing, and breaking of altar. All this nonsense. If your ministry survives, stop doing prophetic acts. If your ministry survives for six months, well, if you stop all these lies you are lying, then it means you are called of God. Majority of them, their churches will close down because they follow worship have been buried around the lies. They should come up publicly and tell the people, I lied about evil water. I lied about oil. I lied. They should do it. If their ministry survive after that, it means they are called of God. Listen carefully. A lot of these men are powered by the spirit of lawlessness. The spirit of lawlessness is what is driving their churches into success. If they remove these false doctrines, the spirit will disappear and the church will fold up. There's a preacher I know personally who accepted, you see, it was in the late 90s. He came to the knowledge of the truth. He had almost 10,000 members. He came, in, he said, what? You mean all these things I'm doing, this deliverance stuff, this oil, this salt, is demonic? Ah, no, 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 no. That was after God sent an apostle to remove the demon of deliverance from his church. And the guy stood publicly and said, I've been wrong teaching about evil altars. I've been wrong teaching about oil. I've been wrong. The Sunday he announced it, he lost 5,000 members. But because he didn't care, look at what God did to him. Few months later, the church increased to 15,000. Because until a seed of corn falls and dies, it abides alone. So listen carefully. That was a sign that God called him, but he was just misled. Were just misled. So do not expect these ministers to stop using these things. They will defend it. They will bring scriptures. They will say a lot of stuff. They will bring scriptures. They will say a lot of stuff. They will defend all these things because that's what's giving their relevance. The religious prayers, the hypocrite, the prayer of the hypocrite. Show me a politician that will not finance your ministry if you say you want to pray for him to win an election. No one. Especially if you have relevance. One of the politicians here in Kenya called me and said, a prophet, I won't mention the name, ask him to, I won't mention the politician, ask him to give him money for one, two, three. He stormed into our teachings on, 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 on Sunday. And I asked, I asked him, who is the prophet? mentioning him. I told him, listen, don't give the money. He said, they say, if I don't give it, they will kill me. As I will be sent against me. I said, don't give it. They are thieves. Don't give them. If God wanted to win an election, you will win without giving them the money. Don't give them the money. So these guys are pursuing these politicians now, putting them in a panic mode and collecting their money. Do you think God will not judge these so-called preachers? Selling prayer. Because politicians are not desperate. They want to win an election. So they are looking for all powers. A lot of nonsense are happening, my friend. So do not expect these men and women to throw away the oil. Don't even expect it. Don't expect them to stop using or to start talking about altars. They will not because their ministries are built on these lies. But look at the danger. Those that God show mercy is going to pass them to chastisement and they will drop. Those who respond, some will not respond to God's mercy. 
God will just leave them to become a pillar of salt like the wife of Lot so that future generations will look at them and learn. They will, they will, they will still be using oil use or whatever until they grow old, fulfill their days and die. Then go and face the judgment. They will be left that way as a sign because until there is a refurbishing of the earth, evil cannot be wiped away on it. There will be no time that there will be no evil on it. There will be no time that there will be no false church. The false church will remain until Jesus comes. The foolish virgins will remain on ground until Jesus comes. 